Hey there guys, as some of you guys might know, I play a lot of strike missions on a daily basis and for this video I teamed up with Ari to play through some strike missions and discuss these strike missions. We'll be talking about mechanics, if the boss is easy, medium or hard in terms of difficulty and what we like and dislike about a specific strike. If you want to catch Ari on stream, her stream will be in the video description. I hope you guys enjoy. So, like, what I do, I do strikes on a daily basis, right? And uh, so we did, we made a little list of strike missions in order of difficulty and uh, what you would definitely need to, uh, to do the strike properly. And I want to start with the first one, and that's the Shiver Peak strike. What do you think about that one? Uh, definitely a strike mission that if you have never done anything related mm -hmm. to this side of the PvE world. Yeah. Um you can you can try it. It's not a difficult one and you can learn from it before yeah. you dive into the harder stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Like it's really it's really easy as this um it has this jumping puzzle at the start, right? You're really yes. good at one that one, right? The jumping uh, puzzle. You're the best jumper let's not, I've heard. Let's not talk about the <laughs> jumping puzzle please. <laughs> okay. I mean, right. my squad always trolls me because I miss the same place. The same yeah. place. It's not even funny. It's always the same spot. <laughs> yeah, but it should be like it's it, it's super doable the, the the jumping puzzle. Yeah, it I is. It's just yeah. me. I have an issue with it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. All right. And um, so the boss, right? Do you think the boss is easy? Um, it is. It yeah. has very simple mechanics. It's just like this big guy, um, he just does like a swirl, he throws you around for a little bit, 50%, mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. to wait until like he comes back to it, and yeah. that's basically it. Yeah. I think there are some like spheres he throws around, but mm -hmm. it's not something that is going to damage you too much if you have like at least one healer per, per party. Yeah. Yeah, so like I think this one is uh, I think you said it before. This is really like an entry level strike mission, right? So if you want to get into strike mission missions, you gotta start with this one. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. And yeah. actually, it was the first strike mission ever included. Yes, in exactly. The game. Yeah, it's well from the prologue, uh, the Bound by Blood prologue. I think, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's that's pretty cool. Like, like, are, are there any classes you would need here? Like you said, healer. Yeah, I will say maybe, yeah, maybe you just need like, you know, a couple of healers, mm -hmm. uh, maybe something to give you quickness if you want to yeah. like down the boss really fast yeah. and DPS, that's all you need. Yes, exactly. Like this is really just uh, a deep, a, a, a strike boss you can easily do with like nine, like eight DPSs, maybe someone that just gives a little gives a little swiftness and maybe a healer but it should be really easy uh to do um yeah it's not really a hard hard boss i personally think the power dps is the best one on this one because uh he faces a couple of times and when that happens you're gonna uh if you apply conditions conditions to it it's gonna lose the conditions and all that stuff so you gotta build them up again so uh, mm -hmm. i think power is the best all right yeah and the next boss on our list was the Freynir of Jormac, right? Do you think that one is easy or hard, medium? Mm, I think this one is like a mix between easy to medium. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you think? It's then? not so complicated, but it, it starts including a little bit more mechanics into yes. it. Yeah, right. You, you got to stay in the middle, right? And fight the, fight the guy. And then he goes into this Ice Colossus that faces two yes. times and then he goes back to his normal self and uh you gotta basically kill him a, a couple times basically so you first kill him in the first form and then he changes into an ice giant and then you gotta kill him back to his again. form back to normal yeah right and you yeah. said something smart about it right it's smart to stay in the middle right and not yes, chase him that, yeah. yeah that's basically the mechanics with this one just stay mm -hmm. in the middle stay tight together so you get all those heals all those spoons everything that you need yeah. Um, n do not just chase the guy and forget about everything that spawns around you, unless yeah. you're looking for the achievement, obviously. Uh, yes, exactly. Just forget about it. Just concentrate on the boss. Um, first form is going to jump back and forth uh, 
and I've seen a lot of people that they just keep running around and then when he starts spawning things around you mm -hmm. that can get you killed if you're away from your group yeah uh, exactly so yeah the mechanics just stay in the middle <laughs> yeah stay in the middle exactly I, I, I do agree it can surprise you from time to time with a little bit of damage so mm -hmm. If we're talking professions, what do you think uh, you would need? You think uh, a healer or something? Maybe something like quickness? Anything? Yes, else? definitely yeah. quickness, definitely mm -hmm. the healers, and mm -hmm. as always, your DPS. I yeah, like... personally do every single strike with my power soul yeah. beast DPS. Yeah. yeah, that works in so, like, most yeah. cases. <laughs> so. It was actually good damage you did uh, back there, so that was uh, good. So yeah, I, I personally I think for Freynir I would choose for uh, power DPS uh, because of the phasing he faces between uh, different stages, and um, uh, Condi will remove those uh, the phasing, uh, the conditions will remove upon the phasing. That's what I'm trying to say. So um, yeah, I usually go for power here as well. So I want to move on to the next strike, and that's the Coden Twins, right? Yes. Yes. I love what do you that think? one. <laughs> yeah? All right. What do, you, what do you think about it? Do you think it's easy or medium? Uh, or? No, this one goes a little bit into the medium. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably medium to hard. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have just one person, one boss that you have to kill. You have two. All right. And yeah, they that's, both that's have, true. yeah, and they both have like different things that they do. Yes. Like you have the guy with the hammer, then you have also the guy with the bow. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have all these mechanics that you cannot just kill one guy and then go ahead and kill the other one because you have yeah. a timer. Mm -hmm. If one dies first, you have a specific amount of time before you can kill the other one and oh, yes, you right. don't yeah. just wipe. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. is what you're saying. So what you what you want to do here, right? When you enter the arena, they all um, uh, they spawn, they jump up. And you want to basically ball them together so you can both damage them a little bit. And then they will phase and then they will split again, right? Yes. And what I usually do and what basically everyone does is you go for the guy with the, uh, on the left first. I think that's the one with the with the bow, if I'm correct. It is. You yes. Want, yes. And you want to get that one down to about 20, 25%. And then you want to hop over to the one to uh, with, the, with the hammer that usually comes walking up to, to you again. And then you want to get him down to 25% and then it'll phase again. And then you want to get the guy with the hammer down uh, as yes. soon as possible. Yes. And the reason you want to do that, because like you basically want to kill them simultaneously. You can never do that. So basically one, one always dies before the other one. So um, what you want to do, you want to kill the guy with the hammer first. One of them will go to the middle and then they will start hitting like cake slices of the field right yes. and the guy with the hammer is way faster and hits way uh it's it's difficult to dodge right if you kill the guy with the hammer first you will have the guy with the bow which is easy so yeah you want to kill that one lost do you agree yes absolutely yes. although yeah. <laughs> let's not forget to mention that if by any chance you didn't kill either of them before yeah. they both go in the middle they they're both gonna go fusion yeah. And it's also going to be a little bit nasty to separate them and then mm -hmm. kill them both. You have to yes. like break the bar really fast. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Correct. Correct. Yeah. That's that's uh, an obstacle for that one. Are there any yeah. classes you would need here, you think? Uh, definitely your healers as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely mm -hmm. quickness. You need mm -hmm. your boons. You need your DPS. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I do. Uh, I do agree. Uh, what I like to do when I'm running uh, a necromancer here, uh, either support or condition, I always bring epidemic so I can uh, bring conditions from one code to the other. But you gotta be careful with it so you don't kill uh, the first one before the second one uh, and mess up the whole run. So always use it at the start or all that uh, all that jazz. It makes it really easy. Hey, um, what I want to do now? Is I want to move on to the next one. Which one is the next one? Uh, I think it should be Whisper. <laughs> yes, it's the Whisper, yes. <laughs> what do you think? I think we, we, we kind of agree on this one, that this, one, this one's hard, right? Yeah. yeah. Both right. both Whisper and Bone Skinner are difficult. Yeah, Bone Skinner. Yeah, but and you think... Yeah, go on. 
even though Whisper has probably more things that you need to be aware of, mm -hmm. I don't understand why the Bone Skinner to me seems the hardest. Yes. Yeah, but I, I I do seem to fail more on the Bone Skinner, personally. Yeah. Yeah. If you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so let me introduce him a little bit. So what happens is you run in, he starts summoning these little tornadoes around you. And um, there are basically a few uh, tricky mechanics here. There is this uh, circle that comes around you. And you have to walk to the edge of the of the circle of the of the arena, basically. And you got to make a dodge right uh, mm -hmm. at the end of it, correct? Yes. Yes. And, and you need to be careful not to be in anybody else's circle. Otherwise, you can dodge yours, but you're still going to take damage from theirs. Exactly. And that's, that's where a lot of people go wrong, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. in, what what yep. I'm doing like with randoms, that's the, that what usually goes wrong. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, and then after that, you will phase you and you will have to fight yourself. Is that a hard fight? Uh, not at all. Although not at all. <laughs> you, no, yeah, exactly. it's not really difficult, but... No, you just gotta hit it. You need to kill the clone as fast as you can, because mm -hmm. outside you are actually taking damage at the exactly. same time. Exactly. And I, I think, think a lot of people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. And they take their sweet time. <laughs> Yeah. So, like, if everyone, if if someone is listening to this and it's like, well, it's not that easy, it's not that hard to kill the the other guy uh, above you in the arena. The people that already killed their clone are having a tough time because they're fighting your clone as well. If I'm correct. Exactly. Yeah, and that that's 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 the toughest part about it. So then you get out, and then there is this chains thingy, and the chains are basically your ouch. your 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 ouch. Yeah, this, <laughs> if you have any friends, you're gonna lose them with the chains, basically, right? And w what are mm -hmm. like the the most mistakes that people make with chains when they have them on? Either whoever has the chain starts mm -hmm. running around and killing the whole squad. Yeah. Or the person who doesn't have the chain is not aware that somebody else has it and they run yeah. right in yeah, front exactly. of it. Exactly. Like the, the thing is the chain does a, a tremendous amount of damage. And if you touch someone else with the chain, it will basically do so much damage that you basically lose half your health with just one touch or like a third of your health with one touch. And if someone gets down while they're in your chain, basically in the the link of your chain between you and the whisper it's going to take so much damage as it's basically you're not fast enough to res them and it's it's going to be really tough and um my rule of thumb here with the with the chains is that you you can move back and forth but you can't move left and right so mm -hmm. uh, people should be able to see your chain so they will avoid it as much as possible don't you, don't you agree yes Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And when we were starting like my whole guild to practice on Whisper, yeah. uh, we would get on Discord and it was like that. Like everybody was like walking backwards mm -hmm. um, with the chain and they will call it out like I got the chain, you know, yeah, so everybody exactly. will be aware of it. So it's actually really nice. Like if you're trying to play this with some friends, mm -hmm. um, this one, also the Bone Skinner, those are like the ones I would recommend. Like if you guys can join on Discord and call out everything, mm -hmm. that would be amazing. Especially yeah, if you're learning. I do agree. Like I learned this one with bugs, so with just random people. And that's way harder because um, like people tend to leave if it doesn't go well. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, having people explain it to you on Discord is way easier. Yeah, it's a great tip. And the, yes. the last last mechanic we, we have to cover is the 25% mechanic, right? And this oh, is yes. where a lot of people fail. If you think your run is going fine and <laughs> you are not at 25% yet, well, you might rethink that for a second. Exactly. Yeah, right. What happens to 25%? Oh, 25% our beautiful Whisper transforms <laughs> and get her staff out to punish yes. everyone. <laughs> With orbs. Yeah, the orbs yeah. are a killer. If yes. you don't walk back, I mean, first time when she transforms, she's going to knock everybody back. Mm -hmm. um, then things are going to start falling down and that's more damage that you're going to start taking. Yeah. Once you jump towards her to continue uh, causing damage, 
Mm -hmm. uh, she creates these arrows on the floor that, you know, there's yeah. something coming. And yeah. are the balls that she starts throwing around. And they deal a lot of damage. Yeah. That, yeah, you I, need I, to I, add yeah. that everybody, almost everybody's going to have a chain. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, then you have the icicles falling from the sky. <laughs> exactly. So there's basically, there's, there's a lot happening at the last part. So you gotta, gotta stay away from the orbs. So I would advise you to stay at a ranged, use a ranged weapon here. And there's also uh, icicles falling from the sky. So there's a lot to dodge and to yes. uh, avoid right here, right? So, and I, I want to, I want to, uh, round up the, the the whisper here. What what classes do you need here? What composition is there? Something you can do with just a healer or a quickness firebrand, or do we need anything else? Uh, for this one, you need mm -hmm. to think a little bit more. I will say, kind of like raid composition. Yeah. You need to have like a strong group that can yes. like survive the whole thing, especially yeah. after twenty five percent. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I do. I do agree. Um, yeah, usually is uh, what you uh, you made the teams, by the way, because I suck at making teams. So what we basically <laughs> used was we used a healer. So I, in our case, we used an elementalist. But uh, and on the second run, we used a druid as well, I think. But um, basically, you need a healer, and I think a support necro is nice because that support necro. We forgot to mention that the support necro can use. Mm -hmm a flesh worm to block the orbs, right? So yes. if you summon a flesh worm in front of him, then that will block the orbs that are coming towards you. You can safely stand behind that flesh worm and uh, range the uh, Whisper of Jormag down. So that's a really good thing to bring at least one necro. And exactly. also, yes, oh, exactly. And also uh, quickness firebrands are pretty good. And DPS, I think, right? Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. A DPS. A DPS is good. <laughs> so you want to bring that one. So yeah, I want to go to the last one. That's the Bone Skinner. It's the easiest Ouch. one, right? <laughs> yeah. Oof. Super yeah. easy. <laughs> no, no, it's not super easy. No, it's the hardest one. Uh, well, it's one of the harder ones. Like uh, a shared first spot with uh, with the Whisper of Jormac, I I'd say. So. The, the bone skinner is um, what makes the bone skinner pretty hard is that you have to move around him clockwise right all yes. the time because he's gonna summon these nasty puddles of darkness and if you stand into that for like more than one second you're dead and yes. uh, you're gonna very, stay dead like, yeah. yeah the damage that they deal is ouch <laughs> yes yeah exactly i uh i do agree with you on that one so um what really helps here is you gotta move around. Usually you have a commander tag and you want to stack on that commander tag as much as possible. Move around with him and stay stacked because it's gonna summon, summon an AOE puddle around you uh, for each player that's in your party or in your squad. So what happens is uh, if everyone spreads out, there's gonna be black AOEs all over the over the area. What, uh, what happens is if someone dies in the darkness, it's always really good to have a heal necro with you because that one can use transfusion and teleport people out of the darkness or, or yes. out of the black, right? Yeah, exactly. As well as the droid, the droid can do this as well. I play soul beast. I also have the skill, but since it's not like my task, to mm -hmm. be resting people, yeah. I don't use the skill. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the druid can do that with search and rescue. Yes. Uh, search they and can rescue, basically yeah. pull any anyone from a specific uh, range mm -hmm. and get them out of that darkness. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Really good one. And it, like where it gets really messy here, and that's where a lot of people wipe as well, is when he jumps up for the first time. He gets down. And um, it gets real messy because people tend to spread out. And the thing you want to do here is stand close to the commander, right? Yes. Yes. And the last thing what, that makes this one really nasty is those little wisps. Don't you agree? Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, right, yeah. And this is what I'm telling you. Why I feel like this may be one of the hardest, even though it doesn't have... Like, it doesn't have so many things that you need to, like, pay attention, like, for example, with Whisper. 
Mm -hmm. um, but with this one, it's really hard because you need people to stay on tag at all times. Yes. And then you get the wisp that mm -hmm. throws their attacks. Mm -hmm. And they spawn the AOE that looks just a little bit similar to the one from the Bone Skinner. And yeah. people freak out and they start running around. Um, yeah, yeah. And this is what starts creating the whole snow, you know, snowball. Yeah, yeah snowball effect, people dying. Yeah. Exactly, because, yeah. I mean, the reason why we usually ask people to stay on tag is because whenever the bone skinner is going to spawn the aoa is going to be in mm -hmm. that specific area now is everybody's yeah. just like spread wide apart the bone skinner yes, is it. just going to throw it everywhere and then you don't have room to move so you can yes. hit the bone skinner yeah yeah i do i do agree with you on uh, on that one exactly so what i usually do is if i'm running necro i bring epidemic to uh to spread the conditions from the bone skinner to the wisps that that might kill them a little bit and also yeah. uh, i saw some guardians using wall of reflection but uh, or some kind of reflect or like all kinds of barriers to stop those incoming projectiles from the wisps so to sum this up real quick what 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 do you think is a really necessary profession for this one is there a profession you would need? Bring your healers. They Bring are healers. your best friends. <laughs> They're your best friends. I do agree with you on that. I do agree. So, and, and I think in, in, in terms of, uh, well, healers, of course, then you need your quickness, right? Yes. Um, Bring your healers. Your... Bring your boons. Bring, Bring your boons. DPS. Bring your DPS. Yeah, that's right. And I think you, I think Condi and Power both work here on this one. So... That's, uh, but that's yeah. just my opinion. Yeah. And right. it wouldn't hurt to have one person that can be some sort of like a hybrid, like mm. assist a little bit more with the healing, you know? Yeah. But at yeah. the same time, either giving people more quickness or mm -hmm. as well helping with the DPS. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, that's a, that's a great addition actually. Yeah. All right. So I think that was, uh, that was our list. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's right. So until they add the on new one, the twenty six, I think the new one. Yeah, twenty sixth of May. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, one strike, mm. and I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, same, same, same here, same here. Hey guys, um, this was a little bit new for me, for us to like do a double uh, uh, a stream. Uh, thingy or I mean a video <laughs> with uh, two people. So let me know what you think. And Ari is on Twitch and you can find her on Twitch in the video description and in the title and all that stuff. You can find her there. So if you want to watch one of her live streams, you can use that link over there. When do you use this stream? stream? <laughs> yeah, follow, follow, follow Ari, follow Ari. And don't forget to <laughs> subscribe uh, to me as well. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Learned a little bit about the strike missions and uh, hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was somewhat different than the other videos I make, but let me know if you're open to one of these videos in the future. For now, thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.